what, what the haters talking about. What's up, family? University of Central Florida kicker Donald De La Hay has been ruled ineligible after continuing to receive advertising money for his YouTube videos, the school announced on Monday. Knights coach Scott Frost said last week during the start of the preseason camp, De La Hay was a member of the team and UCF Athletics Association worked to seek an NCAA waiver that would allow De La Hay to keep posting YouTube videos while competing for the Knights. De La Hay and NCAA officials, however, could not reach an agreement that would keep him on the field. Once De La Hay declined the NCAA's waiver terms, UCF suspended him to avoid repercussions for working with a player the NCAA was likely to later rule ineligible. I see what the youngster was trying to do. Those YouTube videos can translate into some serious dollars, especially for a college athlete. A couple hundred dollars a week, man, goes a long ways for athletes. A long ways. These college athletes, man, I mean, they don't get a lot. I mean, people talk about the free education. Okay, that's good. That's, that's damn good. Free education, you can get a little meal plan or whatever. But what about the food outside of cafeteria food? What about when your stomach is growling through the night? What about med medical expenses when you have an injury or something's going on with you outside of athletics? What about gas or car maintenance? What about those expenses? They like those students to really be 1,000% dependent upon them so that those students could basically be slaves to them. And I liken it to a plantation style relationship. You know, it's, it's like, it's some type of organization, some type of, it's a corrupt organization. If the Italians were doing it, they'd call it the mafia. They, they, would, they would call these universities and colleges mobs. But they're not Italians, so I guess it's cool. This is what UCF had to say in a statement. They said, the waiver which was granted stated De La Haye could maintain his eligibility and continue to monetize videos that did not reference his status as a student athlete or depict his football skill or ability. The waiver also allowed him to create videos that reference his status as a student athlete or depict his football skill or ability if they were posted to non-monetized accounts. De La Hay chose not to accept the conditions of the waiver and has therefore been ruled ineligible to compete in NCAA sanctioned competition. UCF Athletics wishes him the best in his future endeavors. Okay, one might say rules are rules. Okay, I get it. So, I'm wondering what dude was really coming from, though, because as much as I despise the practices of NCAA, I have to look at the role that this guy, De La Hay played. They gave him options. It did seem like they were trying to work with him, notwithstanding that they are slave drivers. It seemed that they were trying to work with him. And he opted not to comply at all. He chose to opt all the way out and said, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to put out these videos anyway. In fact, this is what he actually said. He said, I'm going to upload regularly to this channel. I'm not stopping that. I'm not demonetizing. I refuse to. So it's out of my hands now. Do sound a little like a 
military combatant. I refuse to. It's out of my hands now. I'm thinking he's getting ready to start World War III or something. He's going to hit a button or something. Boy, boy sound kind of scared. This is what the official NCAA rules read. This is NCAA Bylaw 12.4.4, and it addresses athlete self-employment. The rule states an athlete may establish his or her own business, provided the student athlete's name, photograph, appearance, or athletics reputation are not used to promote the business. Most of this guy's 59 videos includes him talking about being an athlete. So they're cool with it as long as you don't make any money off of it. They don't want you to be able to make money off of your name and likeness and associating yourself with being an athlete once you sign that contract. So let that be a lesson. Let that be a warning to you future athletes out there. Once you sign on with these universities, these colleges, they got you. You belong to them. You're their property. You belong to them. I really despise these guys, though. I really do. But I really have to say that this guy, De La Haye, he's pretty... He pretty, I don't know if he, is, is, is he bold, is he brave, is it, is he crazy? Because by all indications, he's a very good athlete. They say he's very good. So I don't see why he would forego becoming a star in the NFL, a potential star in the NFL, to become a YouTuber. You know, uh, I think the upside for what he's doing, the particular route that he's taking on YouTube, I don't see him making more money doing that as opposed to the money he could make as a kicker in the NFL. Because those dudes get paid millions and millions of dollars. And I know there's our YouTubers that get paid millions of dollars also, but not in the lane that he's in. And much of what he's talking about has to do with you know who we are as an athlete a lot of re the reason of the reason why people's following him is because he is a star athlete so you take that platform away from him then how much are people going to pay attention to him after that that's the only thing that remains to be seen about this because from my standpoint, if I was an athlete, I wouldn't do it. If I thought I had a legitimate shot at making the pros, I wouldn't do it. Now, I read another story today about another athlete who drove his brother's vehicle and his school investigated him <laughs> because his brother had a nice, clean, I think they said it was a Dodge, a Dodge Challenger or something, and it was clean. So his brother lets him drive it from time to time. And so the school got wind of it, and they felt like the student shouldn't be driving around in this nice vehicle. He has to be doing something. So... He tells them, look, this is not even my car. This is my brother's car. I'm just driving it. They don't believe him. They go to the brother. The brother confirms the story. They don't believe him. They start going through his friends list on social media and contacting people and asking him, do you know if, if this 
is true or not. The brother, they started asking the brother, well, how could you afford this vehicle? So the brother said, look, I, I cut hair on the side. Cutting hair, that's my side hustle and I make a lot of money cutting hair. And they're like, well, how can you make that amount of money to cover that kind of car and have be able to pay that type of note? You know, how can you make, he's like, look, I cut, I think he said something like 20, 30 heads, you know, a week or something. And they come back and they didn't believe that black guys get their hair cut once a week. Most of the black guys I know get their hair cut twice a week, you know, every other week, not twice a week, but every other week. But some do, many do get their hair cut every single week. But anyway, they didn't believe him, so they tried to make this guy provide proof, put a list together, all kind of crazy things. These people, they want to own you lock, stock, and barrel. They don't want you getting nothing unless it's coming from them. Does that sound like a slave master to you? It does to me. I feel sorry for the youngster. I know he feels like that he's doing the right thing. He's standing up for what he believes in. But the only thing that I can surmise, the reason for him doing something like that, is that he just really don't really want to play football anymore. He just don't want to play. and Or he just don't believe he can get to that next level. So he's thinking like, look, I'm making money off of this right now and I can take this to a high level. Maybe he thinks he can make a million a year on YouTube. That's the only reason why I can see him not taking one of the options that the school provided for him. Because all he has to do is not monetize his athletic videos and let, let those videos uh, let those feed his monetized videos. People going to see him. You know, all he got to do, if he, if he wants to talk about his athletics and who he are and all that type of stuff, that's cool. He can do that and not monetize those videos, but use those videos to feed the frenzy for those people who want to watch the, the other videos, the monetized videos. That's the way you can do it. Or he could have just put his YouTube account on hold until he made it into the pros and then jump back on it. He could have did it like that, but he didn't think none of those options were viable. So he just walked away from his football career. It's going to be interesting to see how this turns out for him. Either way, whether he becomes a YouTube sensation and makes a lot of money on YouTube or whether he you know, gets on another team, I doubt it. That ain't going to happen in the NCAA. It's the same rules. Or he's able to walk onto a football field and try it for a pro team and actually make the pro team. That would be, be a very interesting story. I'd like to see what happens. I feel for the youngster, but... Rules are rules. A deal is a deal. This whole ordeal reminds me of a song that John Cougar Mellencamp once wrote. Well, I don't know if he wrote it, but he performed it. I fight authority, authority always win. Authority don't always win, but if you do fight them and you come out on the losing end, just make sure it's worth it. No more talk. What, what the haters talking about? Yeah. Order,